Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro where we continue our video user guide for APT with starting APT and connecting your cameras. So we'll get into this fairly quick. I'm trying to keep these videos as short as I can so we'll get straight into it. Now as the user guide states there are a couple of different modes that APT runs in depending on what camera you're running. If you're running a supported DSLR, you know, Canon EOS or a Nikon, it is one mode and if you're running a CCD CMOS camera it is a slightly different mode. But the way you connect them is pretty much the same. So we'll get into that um, and if you have a uh, CCD or CMOS cameras and you're having a bit of a problem with them the guide does have a section for a little bit of troubleshooting um, I've never had any trouble so I haven't had to do these so but if you do just be sure to check that part out as well but for now we'll move straight into starting APT and getting the camera connected now I've cheated a little bit here and gone ahead and created myself a couple of profiles which is something that will come up in another video later on um, simply because connecting cameras today I have different bits of equipment um, I have DSLRs and CMOS cameras and they'll be connected up differently so I decided to create a profile for each one that I'm going to need um, so instead of starting straight up APT will give you this drop down list and it gives you a timer to select which one you want or it'll start the last one you used so I'm going to select my DSLR, DSLR with lens profile today that's probably the easiest one you ever get to set up once we get more into this and I will just before I do that um, if you ever need to start APT without loading any drivers for your mount or your cameras or anything else uh, it's a simple process of holding down shift while the program launches uh, maybe you want to go do some troubleshooting or look into the image database that APT creates but whatever it is if you don't need the drivers loaded for your equipment or you don't want it to take the time to try and load the drivers if your equipment isn't connected simply hold down shift it will still try and load uh, PHD2 or your guiding software and planetariums if you have them set up um, but it won't load any drivers so simply OK and hold down shift while it's starting now this just speeds up loading a bit quicker and there we go now the first time you start APT you will get this one that tells you um, that you haven't set your location that's something for another video so I'll click no for now um, you are likely to almost also get your uh, checklist pop up as well um, I've disabled that already so it doesn't open on start as that's something that will be covered later as well and I don't want that popping up all the time but now to connect your cameras now just a word on Canon DSLRs at the moment um, a while back Canon announced that they were going to drop older cameras processes from their drivers but they haven't got around to it yet and what that means is that despite either or Maria preparing for that situation um, virtually any Canon EOS camera will connect automatically um, I can just click connect and I've got an old 1100D with a Digic 4 which is supposed to have lost its support but it's still there at the moment so as you see down the bottom where it tells you what camera is connected it connects without me doing anything but I didn't load that up simply because I want to show you the other method of connecting and which is simply to hold down shift click on connect and that'll bring up your camera selector um, it's pretty much the same for all cameras the way you work it um, if you've got a Canon camera you simply make sure that's selected um, this auto part comes in more if you've got multiple cameras which I'll cover on another uh, video when that time comes and what you need to do is select your processor type if you're not sure of what your processor type is go to the APT website on the left hand side you'll see the Canon matrix there's also a Nikon matrix which will tell you what the processor your particular camera has as well as a few more bits and pieces of information you might find useful and if you have a really old uh, EOS camera or Nikon camera uh, it'll tell you if you need special cables or what works and what doesn't work properly and things like that but uh, I know what mine is all my cameras are actually fall in this group so you select that and click OK and it works exactly the same with Nikon uh, 
go to the drop down list, select your model that's lit and if it's listed, and then again click the OK button and it will connect that one. If you have a CCD or CMOS camera, uh, there are a number of ways you connect it. If you don't have one that's directly supported, you just use the ASCOM connection. Um, if you have one that is supported or you're using Indigo or Indy as a server for your camera, um, you select that. But if you have one of these ones that are listed here, you simply click on that and then again, OK. Now, if you have a color, one shot color CMOS camera, you may want color previews. To be able to do that, you need to um, enable color fits preview and uh, select the appropriate Bayer filter. Uh, most of them will be RGGB, but you need to check with your camera to make sure what it is. Now, if you have a mono camera, be sure not to select this. And I do strongly, strongly recommend that if you have a mono camera and a one-shot color camera to create separate profiles for them. The reason for this is if you have the debayering and in your settings you set it to store the Bayer pattern for a color camera, if you connect a, a uh, monochrome camera instead and forget to change that setting, when you save the files, when the files are saved, the Bayer pattern will be saved in the, in the fits header. And when you go to do your post processing, stack the image, etc., they will be considered as color images. They will have three channels, and it, it is a pain in the butt to go back and change them back to being just monochrome. So that's just a bit of advice: separate profiles for one-shot color and mono cameras if you have them. But as I'm only connecting my Canon DSLR, my 1100D, I'll simply select what I need to here and click OK. And again, it's done. And that's it for connecting a camera. You can now head off further into your um, processing, into your program and do other settings which will be covered in um, future videos. But for now, that's it. So I'll just switch is all clear skies and I will see you in the next one if you care to join me. Thanks for being here. Bye.